So welcome to episode six. Hopefully you are enjoying this particular series so far. We are now moving forward with now working with SQLite with inside our application. We're now gonna create our first query to insert data into our application. We're also gonna wrap a form validator in there as well, just to kind of police the data that we're gonna get added into our application. So without further ado, let's roll our sleeves up, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay then, so in this episode, let's have a look at what we are going to build. So here is the final application running. Let's have a look here. This is the start screen. Now you wouldn't have seen this at the very beginning of the series because of course I was demonstrating goals that was already in our application. But we've got this nice pulsating start button, which I will show you how to create towards the end of the series. But I'm just gonna hit the start button now. And here I am in the kind of create a goal kind of a pop-up that I've got from there from the bottom. So this is what we're gonna implement. We're now gonna take receipts of the user's information. And of course, we're then gonna start working on the database side where we're gonna insert this record into our sort of SQL database that we got installed on it with inside our application. So I'm just gonna put test goal in here. Just gonna put some test in here, just hit create. And we're gonna kind of get all of that functionality created in this particular episode. And then we'll focus on kind of what happens then on this particular page, which then reads that data and then presents it with inside the UI. So let's now move on and let's start getting our hands dirty in building that part of our application. Okay, so a couple of episodes ago, we created an SQLite database file, which we are now gonna upload into our Flutterflow project. Now by doing that, of course, what we're now gonna do then is activate the SQLite features within inside the application. And of course, that's gonna allow us to then move forward in this particular series and start utilizing the database features within Flutterflow. So on the left-hand side here, let's choose the little cog on the left-hand side, move down to the SQLite option here down the bottom, just select that, hit and enable SQLite, and now this allows us to upload our database file. You can see here that I don't have anything there. So I'm just gonna put a name in here. I'm just gonna call this one My Goals, and I'm gonna choose a little upload option here. Now on my on my desktop here, I have the My Goals DB. Just hit, op uh, just choose, select choose there. I was expect to see open. And uh, now this file is now successfully being uploaded. And in just a moment, that will appear. There it is, all done. So that's now all activated for us. Now we're gonna come back to this particular section here very, very shortly, because this is gonna allow us to configure the queries that we're gonna utilize with inside our application. But before we do that, let's just head back over to our widget tree, and I'll just explain a little bit more about how that actual kind of component will work when we start kind of configuring it. Okay then, so quite simply, let's just explain a little bit about kind of what's happening or what will happen behind the scenes with inside this particular component. Components. Certainly if you've not been using Flutterflow for too long, just to kind of orientate ourselves to what we're doing. So what we're gonna do is, um, this is quite a very, very simple component. It's not really gonna do a lot. Very shortly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a form validator in there that will just make sure the user keys in the details that we require into these particular uh, sort of text fields specifically. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna then, with inside the create button here, we're gonna create a brand new action just up here. That what the first thing is gonna do is gonna validate that particular form. It's gonna say, okay, have I entered values into those particular text fields? If we do, we move then on to the next action and quite simply the next action will then do the magic. It will then insert that particular record within inside our SQLite database. And once that is done, of course, what we'll then do is we'll then just kind of close down this particular kind of bottom bar here and then we'll return back to then the kind of the main homepage. So that is what we're gonna now do. So that the first thing I'm gonna do next really is kind of get this form validator kind of implemented on this particular screen and then we'll move on to the actions to then kind of make all of the magic happen but before but before we do that specific bet we're also going to need to make sure that we create a sqlite kind of insert query that we're going to invoke from this particular screen so it's a kind of like a multi-step process in this particular section so let's now first implement the form validator 
OK, so let's wrap our scrolling column then with this particular widget. So I'm just going to right click there. I'm going to wrap widget and I'm just going to see down here. You can see we've got one here called form validation. So just select that. Now, that's nicely in place. Then what you'll see down the bottom right here is that our form validate a form validator will kind of automatically pick up the kind of the the kind of the form type widgets that we have with inside our user interface. You can see here we've got the, the gold title text field and the description and then the status drop down. Now, in this particular application, we could validate against making sure that the user keys in a title and they also key in a description. But what I'm going to do is for this particular example is I'm just going to make sure the user keys in the title itself. So with this selected, just hit, just hit the little tick here. Um, if I now just expand this out here by just clicking on the top here, I can quite simply say that the field is required. Now this error message will appear, of course, as soon as I hit the create and we invoke the action to validate the form, then the UI will automatically update and it will show that the field is required required. Of course, I could put some other kind of values in here. And of course, feel free to do that if that's what you'd like to do in your application. I'm going to keep this one pretty straightforward for now. And of course, there's some more advanced features where you can do more sort of text validations here. So I encourage you to kind of have a look at that here. You can kind of just do sort of emails and usernames and stuff like that. And of course, I'm just going to say none here because I'm not, I don't want any specific validation to kind of automatically be sort of automatically get added to my particular project. So as long as I've got this one ticked here, we are good. Now, of course, I can automatically validate as well. So, of course, I could uh, kind of validate this form as I'm kind of using it, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to make sure that I do the validation on this particular bit here, because, of course, if the users keyed everything in successfully, I want the UI to be nice and simple. I don't want to kind of interfere with putting sort of text labels up there or something like that to say, oh, you need a key in this particular field. I'm going to do all the validation here. Now, the good thing is, is that if the, if the form passes its validation, I don't need to interfere with the user experience. I can then just move on to the next step to then insert that particular record. So that's it. That's all I need to set up here. That is all good to go. So I'm now going to move on to the next bit where we then move into the database world. And that's when we can start setting up our insert query, which is going to be super important to us in order to get this goal saved and persisted to our database. So let's go and do that now. And then we'll come back to this bit very soon. OK, so here we are then back in the settings and integration section and within the SQLite section. This is where we need to go now. We need to go into the update queries. Now, it's a kind of a bit of a misleading term, actually, because we're going to be creating an insert query here. But um, nevertheless, that's what we got available. We need to hit the add a query option. Now, I don't expect you to have any particular skills creating these particular queries, but there is enough here for you to follow in along and hopefully it will make sense. Now, of course, this is going to directly match the table structure that we created a couple of episodes ago. Now we need to add some variables because we're going to, we want, we're going to want to get a handle here of the values that we're going to then pass in and we're going to reference those within inside this particular section in just a moment when we actually create the SQLite query. So we we know that we've got a title, we know that we've got a description, we know that we've kind of got a status to represent the progress of our goal and of course there is also the timestamp as well that we're going to kind of associate with our goal. So how do we do that? Well quite simple, just going to create our variable here. So we know that we've got a title. I'm just going to keep this as nullable here. That's absolutely fine. I'm always going to pass a value in. Title, we've got a description as well, which is a st of type string. Hit add variable again. And we've got a status here like that, which again is a string. Add the variable. This is the only one that's slightly different. And this one, I'm just going to call uh, created here. Now, I think it's it, we had it as created uh, at, I think, in the table structure. So this the type is actually going to be an integer. Again, I'm not worried about this saying nullable. We're always going to pass a value in. So once we've got that, that's all set up for us. I'm just going to kind of um, sort of collapse these down here like that. Be careful not to hit the remove button there. I do that quite often. So there we go. That's all of our uh, kind of our variables created. And we're going to give our query a name. This is going to be called insert goal like that. And this is now where we start creating our SQLite query. So what in order for us to be able to insert a record, what we need to do firstly, we need to kind of create kind of uh, we need to tell the, the kind of the query type here. This is going to be an insert. We're going to kind of reference the table name, which is called goals for our for our project. And then, of course, we then need to reference the kind of the the columns, which is going to be the title, the description, the status. And then we're going to then tell it about the values that we're going to pass in. So I'm going to just going to type this out here and I'm just going to walk through it. 
OK, so I've written the very first part of the query. Let me explain a little bit about what is going on here if this is not familiar to you. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say insert into my goals table. That is the one that we create in our database here. Now, these are our column names with inside our database that we created earlier. Now, what we're going to follow up very shortly, of course, then is the values that we're going to pass in. Now, the key thing is here is that when we specify the values here, they need to be in exactly the same order as they have been kind of placed within inside these two opening and closing brackets. So how do we get the values in? Well, I'm going to say values here, and I'm going to do an open bracket again. Now, the, the first one we're going to do here is the title. So the syntax that you need to kind of follow along is a single quote here for a string. And then this is where we now need to specify the variable that we got here. And that is done by putting in a kind of an opening kind of dollar symbol here. I'm going to do an opening a curly brace here. And I'm just going to type in here title and close up with a curly brace and then I'm going to then put a single quote in like that. So that's our first one-to-one -one mapping between the title here and the title name here. Next up, we separate them by a comma here, put another single quote in here, a dollar symbol, then do an open curly brace there. And I'm just going to type in here description like that, close that with a curly brace here, and then a single quote again. Of course, I'm just going to do the same thing here for the status. Let's just do that. And then status just like that here. Single quote to separate that. Now, this is slightly different because of course we're just using a number, an integer value here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to do an, a, a dollar symbol here and then specify here the curly brace and I'm just going to then just do, oh, get that right, just type in then created like that and then just close that then off then with a single kind of uh, sort of closing bracket there. So that's pretty well much all that we need to do in order to set up our particular query to do an insert here. So the key thing, and I stress this because it's always sometimes confusing, certainly if you're dealing with a lot of data here, just make sure that you get these in the same order as the values that you're passing into the respectable columns within inside the actual database row itself. But that is pretty well much now set up. So if I now just go then down to add a query like that, our query has now been created. So now we've got that in place, we can now reference that query elsewhere in our application. So let's head over and do that now. OK, so let's now hook our create a goal component up to that database insert. Now, that's really straightforward to do because we're going to hit on the create goal button. We're going to move over to the actions here, open up the action flow editor. Now, if you remember last time, we're talking about the validation of the form. So I'm just going to add the first action. I'm going to type in validate here, choose a validate form here. I'm going to select the form to validate. And this is form one. Now, I'm going to go through, I'm going to rename all my widgets, but it's just called form one for now. So I'm just going to keep this as it is all of the settings that are on here we don't need to kind of do anything more we don't want our kind of our validation to continue so it's just going to hold the user where they are um, but of course if the form is valid and it's passed we then want to move on to our next action so choose add action now this is where we are now going to do our database I'm just going to type in SQL there and you can see here we've got this option under SQL like called update uh, so update query which is this one just here just select that now the query name is the only one that we have available that we've just created choose insert goal and and now we can specify the variables. Now, where do we get all those values from? Well, of course, it's going to come from the widgets that we have with inside our UI. So just choose variable here. Now, our first variable that we need to select is title. And the value is going to be from the widget state itself. Now, the widgets that we have here, the text field widget has a particular state. Now, of course, as I type values in, that's going to be part of the widget state. So I'm going to lift the value out of that, which is going to be the goal title text field. Just select that. And that's going to grab our value. Hit variable again. Let's choose this one choose description choose the value i'll go to the widget state here and we we'll choose the goal description text field let's carry on adding some more here just choose this one here choose status now this is slightly different because of course it's going to be our drop down but it's no different from anything else here it's got the goal a status drop down which will contain kind of the text value that is going to be available to us now finally the next one is slightly more different and that is of course is going to be the created date now all we simply need to do in here is just pass in a kind of an integer representation of the current date now of course with our application running well then we're going to be able to hook onto that so choose a value here now we 
we can move down here to the global properties. So just choose that here and we can choose here the current time. Just select that. The time unit is just going to be seconds, just a series of seconds here. Now that is all that we need to do. We've got a kind of using internal library with inside Flutterflow here. This can allow us to kind of get that data time, convert it to a series of seconds. And of course, on the, the display of that, we're going to kind of, when we display that with inside the UI, we're going to kind of get hold of the seconds and we're going to kind of reverse that and convert that back to kind of like a timestamp, a formatted timestamp on our user interface. But we'll come and do that at a later point. Just hit confirm that that is all that we need to do. That's all set up nicely for us. The final bit that we need to do is, of course, once we've added that value in, then the user experience is, is we're going to kind of remove that kind of that component from the screen. That's really straightforward here. We just choose add action and you can see this one here called close a dialogue or draw, etc. Just select that. There's nothing more for us to set up. It knows that that's what it's going to do. And of course, it will then remove that from the UI. So that is all that we need to do. If I just close that, we are now set up. We can key values in here. We can validate and we can, of course, create that record on our database. Now, of course, if you were to run this up at this this particular point you're not going to see that record with inside the ui that is the subject and that is the topic of course of the next video in this particular series so let's now sort of move on to that and um and then hopefully we'll be able to get this spun up very very soon where we should be able to then see some success with our application I really hope you're enjoying my content so far on YouTube. If you kind of enjoy my style and everything that I'm doing with inside the Flood of Flow space, I really do encourage you to check out the Digital Pros No Code Academy. This extremely low cost community is there to support you on your journey as you are learning the product. There's lots of articles on there. There's a lovely community on there. There's sample applications, code libraries, more video content. I'm sure there's something there that will support you in your learning journey. The link is there on the description. It'd be great to see you there and hopefully I'll see you soon.